Hello and welcome to The Rabbit Atheist. I'm Ed Raby, a former pastor turned atheist, now a compassionate anti-atheist. Welcome to my channel. If you want to learn how to support the channel and its mission to normalize atheism and deconversion, stay tuned to the end of the video. Today I am reacting to a video from a channel called Solid Window called It's Impossible to Not Be Religious. The video was brought to my attention by one of my moderators, Dren, and is now, who is now one of my favorite Australians. This one was kind of weird and interesting enough. The thumbnail says, The Atheist Dilemma. So I guess from first glance, we are trying to prove that even atheism is some sort of a religion. I am also doing the response a little differently in that I'm listening to the video for the first time and then writing my response at the points I feel it should be stopped and noted. So you're getting me in a more reaction format this time. My answers are written down at certain points to be recorded later, but this was my initial response in all the points. And then I'll do a wrap-up at the end of what I think overall once I've had some time to think about the video as a whole. So take it away, Solid Window. As scientific understanding has advanced, more and more people have grown skeptical of old religious ideas, myself included. But what secular people fail to understand is that they aren't getting rid of a religious worldview, they are just replacing it with a new one. No matter how hard you try, you can never truly escape the religious dimension. This isn't just semantic wordplay, either. I am sorry, whenever I hear this argument, it always boils down to what you're defining a religion is and what it means to be religious. Semantics is not always a part of it, but my experience with theists on this question is to either not define these terms at all in order to keep the idea vague and intuitive or depend on common intuition about what these definitions mean. I'm hoping at this point you're not saying this, you know, it's not just about semantics to avoid defining the terms in the first place. Because if we define the terms, then we'd have some common understanding of what we're talking about. But let's see what you're, where you go from here. Religion evolved as an answer to fundamental questions about the world and our place in it. Modern society seems to think that it has avoided these questions by proving our previous answers to be wrong, but that's not really true. What they have done is give new answers. By giving new answers to these questions, they have created a new religious system called atheism. An atheist is not outside looking in on religion with a critical eye. They are within the same sphere as every other religion giving answers to the same questions that religions have always attempted to answer. In this way, atheists are people who have the religious belief that God does not exist, among other things. No, you're already off to a bad start, because you make the claim that we are part of the religious sphere like everybody else. But I would ask, how so? You add on the statement, we claim other things at the little end there, but you don't say what at this point. As far as I know, atheists don't really make any claim unless they're making the claim that God doesn't exist. I just state that the evidence for the God presented to me is not convincing, so that makes me an agnostic atheist. That's it. I don't believe in God. Now, that can have some ramification as to what I will get rid of as possible answers to other questions, but it doesn't actually provide any other answers itself. The real issue at this point is you make the claim that atheists claim other things, and I am interested to what those other things are and whether or not they would really be atheist claims. But so far, I'm feeling like your assertion is that this is, back when you said it wasn't about semantics earlier, is just an excuse not to define religion or religious so we can compare what you are saying to these definitions. It's an important distinction because I think, so far, atheism has had it fairly easy. Its role has largely been one of criticism of religion, while avoiding any responsibility to give their own affirmative answers. Of course, it's much easier to criticize someone else's idea than it is to provide an idea of your own. If atheism wants to be treated seriously, I think it should be required to provide some sort of coherent worldview. Atheism acts as if it's in the peanut gallery, mocking the jokers in the spotlight. He has yet to realize that it's actually on stage with the rest of us. Why am I required to provide a coherent worldview as an atheist? That is where not providing definitions of what you mean to, about certain terms becomes problematic. I would have to ask at this point how non-belief in any God can be turned into a worldview. 
How do you build a worldview from such a limited focus or such a limited statement of understanding? This is where I think you wrongly assume is is that atheism somehow deals with something that is broader. You don't prove this by saying what else we assert. Just because atheists are critical of the God claim doesn't invalidate the criticisms, nor do I have to produce a worldview to validate those criticisms. I would say that you're engaging in poisoning the well a little bit here to make atheists look bad by shaming them for not providing answers for which atheism might not have the capacity to provide those answers. Unfortunately, I feel like you're making atheism into much more than what it is. For example, it seems to me that atheism should be required to give a more coherent account of its creation story, provide a more thorough portrayal of what it means to have a subjective experience in the world, and answer how they think one ought to live. How is atheism capable of doing all these things when all it is is a rejection of the God claims? I would like to know how the one tenet of I don't believe in God can be expanded to answer those questions. You don't really give a mechanism of how one could get from the God claims negation to answer all those questions. You demand those answers without even considering if the limited scopes of atheist counterclaim to the God claim's existence is even capable of doing so. Now, that is not to say that people who are atheists do not have answers for those questions. They do, but they don't have the reason to consider God in giving their answers, but rather other fields such as Big Bang cosmology, of philosophical systems that are both employed by others outside the atheist sphere. These are not necessarily connected to atheism, and people who are religious hold them as well. Once again, I am waiting for definitions here, and a mechanism of how I don't believe in God could be turned into a worldview. For the creation story, atheists will point to the Big Bang, but This is a weak creation story at best. It's very good at describing what comes after the universe is created, but offers no insight into where all of this material stuff comes from. The first law of thermodynamics says that energy cannot be created or destroyed. If energy can't be created, how did the universe come into existence? Seems like a glaring contradiction of their own system, something akin to a scientific miracle. An atheist might respond that, We don't know the answer yet, but we will in the future. But this feels like a cop-out. It amounts to faith, which is perfectly fine in your personal life, but if you want to play on the same playing field as everyone else, you have to abide by the same rules. Faith is not a good enough answer. I agree that faith is not a good answer. This also means that when religion uses that answer, it's not a good one either. Cosmic inflation was actually first proposed by a theist, and so isn't exclusively an atheist proposition. But Big Bang cosmology is not based on faith, it's based on data that is well documented. As for the energy thing, there are proposals that attempt to answer this question. Your assertion basically kind of indicates that you claim there's only one, and that is not true. If one doesn't know the answer to a question, then the honest answer is to say, I don't know. Faith claims to know something, so I don't know is not a statement of faith in any sense by anybody. The problem is you're not defining terms grows in your argument. All that really shows is that you're trying to force an answer out of people who hold Bing Bang cosmology, which means that they would have to make something up, which would amount to be forcing deception. Demanding answers of people and then saying that if one does not, they are in some way deficient is a little bit lacking and manipulative in my book. To me, learning to accept my ignorance and not giving made-up answers is what leads to honest inquiry, not forcing an answer without evidence. This leads to misunderstanding and to deception. If religions aren't allowed to use faith to justify their beliefs to you, then you can't use faith to justify yours to them. As for subjectivity, atheists point to electrical activity in the brain, but this is an underwhelming answer as well. Saying that our subjective experience is no more than neurons firing is like saying that music is no more than sound waves. While technically true, it does not capture the mystery of the experience we are referring to. It is a misdirection at best. The subjective experience is, in my opinion, one of the most perplexing aspects of the universe. It would make much more sense for blind, dumb matter to be bumping into itself without an awareness of it. Awareness itself is incredibly strange. 
pointing at the physical material within the world as if that is an explanation of subjective consciousness is ridiculous. Sorry, you greatly straw man what people say, more than answers by the way of subjective experience being nothing more than neurons firing. It is far more than what you say here. Just because the answer doesn't strike you as intuitively right doesn't make it untrue. Just saying that, your opinion, that this opinion is ridiculous does not prove that it is ridiculous. It simply may indicate that you simply don't understand it well enough. But the idea of subjective experience being the atheist answer is simply not true. I'm not sure once again how this connects, you connect subjective experience to the statement, I don't believe there is a God based on the evidence. At this point, the way you present things is clearly your opinion. You don't provide the evidence that this is something more than your opinion. You just assert that it doesn't feel right to you. As for the last bit, a secondary role of religion is as a society-wide model for how one ought to live. There are periods of history when religion became overbearing in this capacity. The Inquisition comes to mind. But in a healthy society, its use case remains relevant. The role needs to be filled by someone or something. That can be unintentional or intentional, but it will be filled one way or another. Atheists have not yet answered the question of how one ought to live. When the question is broached, the answer seems to be akin to nihilism. We are particles moving around in the universe with no purpose beyond surviving and reproduction. Do as you please. But do as you please isn't a very good answer. If you scale that model out to size, you end up with some rather unpleasant consequences. The rising deaths of despair being just one example. Despair has multiple causes, not as you seem to think is it only nihilism. People who are religious also despair and also become nihilistic. People despair for many reasons. Sometimes people even get into depression because of their religious beliefs. There's a whole thing called recovery from religion that kind of counters that. First of all, I have never heard too many people advocate for do as you please, including my atheist friends. One cannot just not do as they please as part of the human race. We humans have multiple ways of holding each other accountable. Laws, government, social pressure, family expectations. The list is long. As an atheist, I certainly don't advocate for do, do as you please. So uh, is that kind of indicate that maybe that's not connected to atheism in general? So do as you please doesn't really have any utilitarian value in my book, nor is it a reflection of reality. But again, again, how does the lack of God belief translate into a moral system by itself in the first place? It doesn't have that capacity. That said, however, the idea that one cannot have a moral system without religion or God is also false, as there are many. But going into a little early statement that moral philosophy is in some ways inherent religion, but how do we justify one of those moral philosophies over another when various religions claim different moral philosophies and moral answers to the question? Also, doesn't the fact that the Inquisition happened to, happened, happened to also indicate that there's an inherent flaw in the moral system of Christianity that leads to the possibility of the Inquisition in the first place? There is some inherent flaw in the Christian moral philosophy that allows such things to happen. Isn't that possible? My point is that just because religions have moral systems doesn't mean that they are good ones. And there is something we are judging all these religious systems by that is outside religion and religiosity itself. Just something to think about. There is the introduction of ethical utilitarianism as a sort of secular ethical structure, but in practice this justifies some unsettling actions, such as the doctor who kills a healthy person to harvest their organs for others who are dying. If this were actually practiced, we would have this person jailed, and in my opinion, we would be justified for doing so. Even in its less extreme instances, utilitarianism raises many questions. If you remember right, this is the system which came to the conclusion that normal people are evil because they don't give all of their money to charity. Taking the extreme possibilities of a moral philosophy does not prove that the moral philosophy is invalid. I have utilitarian leanings myself when it comes to moral philosophy, and I would say that both your examples fail on utilitarian grounds. The first fails because it is never utilitarian to kill in this manner. You might solve the problem of a lack of organ donors temporarily, but you're going to get caught at some point and then the problem returns. 
focusing on long-term and more sustainable alternatives is far more utilitarian than the doctor example. Plus, killing somebody else is never a good utilitarian view. Your second example fails because then normal people become impoverished and need to charity gets worse. There's actually a great utility in being selfish at this point and taking care of yourself so you don't become a burden to yourself or others. In both examples you give, I think utilitarianism would counter you with some things I outline plus many more. Moving on, it's important to remember that despite some claims to the contrary, religion is a human product. It's going to be flawed one way or another. Atheism doesn't need to have all the answers perfectly figured out right this moment, but at least do us the courtesy of actually engaging in the game you're pretending not to play. I am playing the game, like it or not, so no, I would not pretend not to. You've already in this video given so many answers that supposedly atheists say, but then somehow we're not playing the game of what exactly? But you seem to think that the game is about religion and it all can be defined as religion, but I don't think that's so. But because we don't have your definition of religious or, or religions, we don't really know what kind of game we're actually playing, are we? In short, you haven't defined what the game is. You've assumed that atheism has the ability to play the game in and of itself, which you haven't proven, when it may simply not have the capacity to do so. Basically, this is kind of an ad hominem attack against us being dishonest about we're just pretending not to play the game. But you haven't told us what the game is or what the rules are to decide whether or not I'm playing or not. But that is not the case. You have simply not defined your terms. So the rules are vague and the game we are playing has not been determined. Is the game religion or is the game life? Mm. If it is the former, I don't play because I, consider athe I don't consider atheism to be a religion because it doesn't match the standard definitions of religion that are put forward. But what you're describing is the worldview or life outlook game of which atheism is only one card, not my whole hand. It's just one of my pieces on the board, not all of them. This moment in theological history that we are living in today is poorly understood. Atheism has only recently staked its flag in the sand and has really only needed to contend with a very specific type of theology, which only came around a short time before atheism itself arrived. Let me explain. Atheism as we see it today began to appear during the Enlightenment era in the 1700s, as technological advances allowed people to throw off the previous social structure, both political and economic. But the religious system which Europe in the 1700s was involved in had only come about during the Reformation, which began in the year 1517. That means it was only around for about 200 years. During the Reformation, the idea of God became something anthropomorphic, physical, and logical. The idea of God was pulled out of its cloud of unknowing and made manifest. By doing so, the theologians of the time opened the doors wide open to anyone who wanted to poke holes in their story. Before the 1500s, God had remained outside of the world. Now that he was considered to be a literal entity within the universe, it didn't take much to disprove his existence. I'm not a Christian, so please don't take this as a Christian apology. I'm merely pointing out that the religious thinkers that were at work just before the Enlightenment had constructed a house of cards by insisting on the literal factuality of their religious doctrine. This was a new feature. The resistance to such figures such as Copernicus and Galileo, because they contradicted the biblical story, is indicative of this rigidity of European belief at the time. But this sort of literal rigidity wasn't in play before the 1500s, and it isn't inherent in most other religions. This whole segment is straight up wrong in my book. I would encourage you to note that medieval system was very literal in its interpretation of the Bible. Jesus himself, if you read his words, is a literalist in the Bible itself, considering the Old Testament. The threat of literalism runs the whole course of Christian theology, as somebody with a master's degree in theology and somebody who has studied a lot of the different theologians of different time periods, you know, long before Copernicus, people were condemned and executed for not believing the literal Bible. The creation story is a good example of something being held as literal truth for most of Christianity's existence. The history of the Old Testament being genuine, same. I have studied a lot of theologians before the 1500s, and I would not make the claim 
as the thread of literal interpretation exists from the beginning of Christianity. It might wax and wane, but there has never been a time where it didn't have some sort of literalist person or literal theologian interpreting the Bible. It didn't just come about in the 1500s. I would argue that any healthy religious movement understands that its stories are metaphorically true while being literally false. There are plenty of other iterations of theology which understand this, and as such are not threatened by scientific discoveries in any way. An atheist may respond saying, what good is religion if it's not literally true? Is it really anything more than a children's story? It's a fair point as far as it goes, but I think it misses something fundamental, which is that this world we live in is unbelievably strange. Not because I don't understand how rain works, but because I'm having a subjective human experience. We live with it every day, so we become numb to it, but if you really think about it, This is insane. Who am I, really? What am I doing here? What is the word I referring to? Am I really just a more complicated bacteria formed from some chance chemical reactions in a lifeless ocean billions of years ago, which emerged from thin air in a big bang out of nothing? Okay, I don't know where this idea of big band proponents say that we came from nothing came from. Probably the title of Krauss's book without actually reading it. But the way you describe things is is designed to indicate a lack of order or purpose. But if things are following natural descriptive law, there would be anything but a lack of order or purpose. Okay, everything would be very purposeful, following a very natural order. So I've never understood why people who are critical of this theory want to talk about order and chaos when everything is being done by ordered descriptive laws. But, you know, to each their own, I guess. I'd also not put my objection to religion in the way that you did. I would say that a faulty view of reality created by religion is going to create moral philosophies with inherent flaws and cause good people to do evil and stupid things because of it. And religion demonstrates this on a regular basis, on a daily basis. That said, all of your questions don't require religious or non-religious answer. Religion doesn't have to be involved, or atheism doesn't have to be involved. You're spouting your feelings again, which is fine as far as it goes, but I don't share this angst you experience in the way you describe. None of that scares me anymore. It's a mysterious experience, to be sure, and maybe it should scare me, but I fail to see the point of being afraid of things that I cannot control anyway. That's my godless, stoic philosophy talking. The real things to be concerned about are things within my control and things I can influence in some way. No amount of fear helps with that. I have answered all these questions as an atheist, but atheism has only been one tool in answering them. Other tools have included humanism, secularism, uh, naturalism, materialism. Atheism can only address what it's capable of addressing. It needs other things added to be an actual worldview. This is an error of this entire video, assuming atheism can be a worldview by itself, when I don't think it has the capacity to do so when you really look at it. If so, then why am I aware of it? What does awareness mean? Just some carbon atoms being shocked in such a way that they form a memory that can later be reformulated? I'm not convinced that that adequately explains the mystery of what is happening here. And this is really where atheism fumbles the ball. In order for it to be taken seriously, it destroys the mystery, or at least attempts to negate it. How is that done by atheism? All atheism does get rid of is the God belief mysteries. All other mysteries of the universe are unaffected by atheism, including those of the great questions you ask. You can still be a spiritualist and be an atheist. I would argue forms of Buddhism are just that kind of thing. Sorry, I still think there are a lot of mysteries to the universe, and my atheism does not even have the capacity to remove or engage them. There is nothing very interesting about us at all, they say. Just some meatbags looking for sex. Think of- Wow. At this point, I'd have to say you would not talk to many atheists or simply regurgitating tropes of what people say atheists say. Do you Did you actually have a conversation with real atheists about what you were going to say in this video before you said it? 
I would say that even science by itself gives a much more complicated, nuanced, and refined view of sexuality than this and human existence. But atheism doesn't say that we are mere meatbags looking for sex. The only thing it would say about such meatbags is that we were not created by a god because there's no evidence for a god's existence. All other options are still on the table. A bit this way. Let's say you're at a really good concert and the music is speaking to you. You're dancing and getting lost in the rhythm. The sensation of having the sound move you is almost surreal, and the elation entering your mind as you connect to something outside yourself is nearly overwhelming. An atheist would describe this whole experience as a series of footsteps. Your knee moved up six inches, then your left foot rotated back 30 degrees. The music was at 120 decibels and 60 beats per minute. They mapped the whole thing out this way. But if we're really being honest with ourselves, is this a good way to describe that experience? No, and I wouldn't describe it that way as an atheist. It's actually more of a scientific observational description that you give, which is only part of my worldview. And there would be many other things that could be used to describe this position. We're not limited in scope to one I simple idea, this monolithic thing that you propose. When I describe some such an event, there would be psychology, sociology, many other things to describe and give us a more complete picture of what's going on when people are dancing, listening to music. You're trying to appeal to human intuition, but even that has a scientific explanation and its limits. This is pure straw man on how an atheist would describe it, because atheism doesn't really have much to do with this description, let alone how it could be described by an atheist. I would argue that music and dancing are very human experiences and have these feelings because we all share on some level the human experience. But you're definitely strawmanning atheism at this point, as you have throughout the video. Isn't something lost in translation? Is it more accurate to describe reality this way? Absolutely. But in focusing on the accuracy of material details, you have lost the more subtle aspects of your subjective experience of the moment. No, I haven't. I simply have a better understanding of them as a materialist or secularist or humanist, which actually makes me enjoy them more. Nothing is lost in translation, as now I have better translation tools than intuition than wishful thinking. Notice I didn't say my atheism, because my atheism isn't what helps me understand the world better. This mysterious thing, which is greater than the sum of its parts, is shuffled under the rug, not to be spoken about. The thing which makes the experience worth remembering is reduced to an annoying byproduct, something to be dismissed as irrelevant. But that mystery is exactly what religion is about. No religious system worth taking seriously believed that it had literally true, infallible answers to the world. All it was doing was trying to get us to remember this mysterious aspect of our reality since it is so easy to get lost in the mundane minutia of our day-to-day life. Atheism's response to this ever is to say, yes, but you're wrong. That's because religion is demonstrably wrong on many points. If you dismiss religions that take their claims literally, then even Abrahamic religions are gone, as any honest assessment of them requires that their faith and meaning claims require some event in those religions to be factually true. If Jesus hasn't literally risen from the dead, for instance, in Christianity, the subjective human claims that Christianity makes about hope of life after death, the human experience, and everything else fall apart. You make the mistake in your analysis of religion that the subjective spiritual claims and the literal historical claims can be separated without damaging or eliminating the former. Often they cannot. Many times the subjective and historical claims are wound so tightly in religion that to separate them is to destroy the religion. This is particularly true when the claims about what revelation comes from are involved. No shit. But so are you. Religious literalism is a dead end, and one which is only a small part of our wider religious heritage. It's time to move past it. Perhaps atheism will evolve and become a stronger religious doctrine, but until it realizes that that's exactly what it is, a religious doctrine, I just don't see it happening. In the meantime, I will be looking for a better description of this transcendent mystery 
we call life. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Helps me out with the algorithm. See you in the next one. The whole problem comes from the fact that you cannot accept that religion and atheism have nothing to do with each other. This was facilitated by the fact that you didn't define either for comparison. Because if you had, you would see the definitions have nothing to do with each other. The problem with your definition of religion, which you give second hand, is so broad and most other things would qualify as a religion or being religious. Most philosophical systems don't necessarily have a God belief or religious connotations to them, but under your definition of religion, they would qualify and their adherents would be considered devoted religious followers of that philosophy. Heck, with your definition, book clubs, sport teams, etc. might also qualify as a religion. And I don't see you asking them to provide a coherent worldview. I want to do an exercise. Let's get the standard definitions of religion and religious and then compare them to atheism and see whether or not that they hold up because this has been my contention throughout this entire video that you have a problem here. So I'm going to fix that problem here and now. Religion can be defined basically three ways if you look up all the definitions. One is the belief in or worship of superhuman powers and powers, especially God or gods. Nope, absolutely not. Atheism has nothing to do with that. Two, a particular system of faith and worship. Also, no, I don't have a system of faith because believing in something is antithetical to what atheism is. But no, I wasn't baptized into atheism. I didn't recite a creed. I didn't do any of that. I simply came to the conclusion that the evidence for the existence of God is insufficient. Three, a pursuit or interest in which something somebody ascribes supreme importance. I suppose a person who is an atheist could ascribe supreme importance to it. But is that the same as what we mean when a person is said to be religious about a particular pursuit? But the pursuit itself can be non-religious. It is also more individualistic than atheism as a group or an idea. So on all counts, atheism doesn't meet the definitions of what religion is. In fact, it might be considered an antithesis of religion and God belief. So, no, we're not a religion. I would also want to restate some points. You are asserting that atheism should provide a worldview. Can it do this is a very valid question as how do you get from the statement, I don't believe in any God, into a worldview? What is the mechanism for it to do so? What you're asking is for a worldview, which is different than a religion itself as well. Religion can be part of a worldview and provide some parts of a worldview, but it doesn't necessarily provide the whole thing itself either. Your real complaint throughout the video is not really directed at atheism, but the secular worldview, which has many components and alternatives, but boils down to a worldview without religion attached to it. But instead it might, but not necessarily have atheism attached to it as the God claim part of it. Atheism, in my case, is just one thing in my worldview made up of many other things. As I look back at this video, I, my problems, my biggest problem with it from a personal atheist point of view is how many tropes, how many assumptions are made about atheism that I think if the creator of the video had talked to some actual atheists, and it's funny because after the video is published, this guy only has, I don't even think he has 200 subscribers, but this video has had a lot of views. It's probably his best video on his channel from a view point of view. And the comment section blew up. When I looked at it last time, it had like 750 comments. And a lot of it was atheists, uh, atheists basically saying, you don't understand atheism. Okay, and that's, that's the problem with the whole video. The person kind of just either came to his own conclusions about atheism and assumed certain things are connected to atheism without really examining things. It all boils down to his little statement with atheism doesn't claims that there isn't a God, and among other things, except atheism isn't capable of doing anything but other than making a claim about the God belief. Anything else falls outside of its scope because that's what it's about. It's atheism. You know, it's, you know, it's not the same. And so a lot of times I see this. Now, this guy isn't a Christian, and I don't think he's really an apologist. I think there's some genuine seeking here. The problem I have with his genuine seeking is that he's not really going out to find out what people actually believe of in their beliefs. 
okay, he's not going to atheists and saying, hey, man, this is what I want to think about atheism. Because the first thing I would have told him is, but atheism is just about the God claim. He gets critical of atheism because we're just critical, <laughs> which is an ironic irony in itself. But that's really all atheism is capable of, is criticizing the claims of those who make claims about God and religion and other religious claims. So I guess my whole thing, you know, don't get me wrong, I found this video very interesting to react to. It was kind of a nice exercise. And the fact that I did that, like 90% of the video where I just watched parts of the video and did my initial reaction and wrote it down and then just recorded it later was kind of interesting because now going back at it, now that I've watched the video a couple times and had a little bit of time to think about it, I don't know if I'd be so harsh in calling him, you know, it, people straw man, for instance, for different reasons. Sometimes they're deliberately straw manning and other times they just don't understand what they're talking about. Legitimately, they're ignorant. And so they straw man not on purpose. And I think there's a lot of straw manning in this video, not on purpose. There's a lot of assumptions made about atheism that when you really look at them, can atheism do this? I, I, I'm going to continue with my assertion or my claim. You know, how does atheism become a worldview? What is the mechanism for that? And until a theist or a person who wants to defend religion can give me that mechanism and show me how that's a possibility, I'm going to continue to go forward with atheism as part of my worldview, but not my worldview. I would probably describe my worldview more as a secular philosophical worldview that has a lot of components and moving parts. And that tends to be the way with most people's philosophies of life and how they live their life or their worldviews in general. And I think limiting it down and saying, hey, you know, the worldview thing, you know, you atheists need to provide a coherent worldview. And my response to that is, if we're playing the game of worldview, then atheism is only one piece of many on the board for me in defining my worldview. If we're playing the game of religion, no, I don't play that game because I can't even really have a piece on the board because religion requires supernatural beliefs. It requires a belief in God or gods. It requires creeds and stuff like that, which I, as an atheist, do not have. So I don't qualify as a religion by my own definitions, okay, by the definitions of what atheism is. And so it becomes a real vicious circle for this kind of reasoning of trying to make atheism into this worldview. I don't think it has the capacity. I think the game analogy is a good one. You know, it's, it's one piece of many on the board that I have in defining my worldview. It is one card in my hand to play among many. Okay, that I play in defining my worldview. It, it's not in and of itself capable of doing anything else. And, you know, and people will say, well, why dedicate a channel? Well, because my whole thing with atheism, guys, is, is what isn't a good answer. And in this case, being a critic is actually a good thing. You eliminate a lot of bad answers when you have proper criticism. And I think the assertion in the video that somehow we're just critical, it's a little poisoning the well, kind of pointing fingers at atheists in a bad light. And it's like, yeah, but that's all it's really capable of doing is saying, okay, you've just made a God claim. This is why I don't believe it. That's the only thing it can really do. And so it eliminates God from the equation, but there's a lot of other things in the equation. So I guess that's my overall criticism. I'd be interested in what you have to think. Uh, so thanks for stopping by. I always appreciate that. Uh, if you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, uh, you know, super thanks, super chat are always welcome. Uh, you can also, you know, just watching the video like you and sharing it with your friends, great way to promote the channel, but also becoming a member. You know, membership allows me to focus on different things instead of the YouTube algorithm where I can do videos where are more coherent and getting things done like this one. So thank you very much uh, for that. I do want to give a shout out to my members, to my citizens, to my rabid citizens, and to my tribunes. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Uh, continue. I hope your continued support uh, meets with your approval of how we do things here on the channel. Always looking forward to your input. And as always, live your best life. You only get one go around and then it's over. So you don't want to waste all your time, money, and opportunities on the trappings of religion and faith. Instead, you want to give them to yourself, to the people you love and care for, and to make this a better world. You'll be happier if you do. Trust me, I speak from experience. 
And as always, thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time.